What are the things that annoy cruise passengers about other cruise passengers more than anything else? I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. I notice there are things that seem to really wind up cruises about their fellow passengers more than anything else. So I thought I'd share those and what I discovered with you right now. And these are in no particular order. First of all, not washing hands and not using the alcohol gel. Norovirus is spread through touch, so touching surfaces, touching your mouth. And the best way of stopping it spreading is through frequent washing your hands with soap and water and also using the alcohol gel. People go absolutely crazy when they see people coming out of the public bathrooms not having washed their hands or going into things like the buffet without having washed their hands or using the alcohol gel because it does put other people at risk. It is one of those things that drives people when they see it happen crazy. Linked to that is also when they see people not using the tongs or touching food and putting it back because again that puts everyone at risk of the norovirus and it's one thing that I've seen people get really upset about and drives them crazy when they see people touching food, putting food back and not using the tongs. Other people smoking or vaping on the balcony next to them, above them or below them is a thing that drives cruisers crazy. There are very strict rules on cruise ships now about where you can and can't smoke and pretty much every single cruise line smoking on your balcony is not permitted. Vaping in your balcony is not permitted. A lot of people still try and sneak a fag or a vape because it's quite a big trick often to go to the areas where you can smoke. It drives people crazy and I have seen people go absolutely mental and I've seen them go and report people and it's one thing you'll see in a lot of the cruise forums people going absolutely crazy where people smoke where they're not supposed to. Saving lounges around the pool, on the decks, or saving seats in a theater is another thing that drives cruisers crazy. And it's probably of all of these things is the one where I've seen the most arguments and people really falling out and going absolutely crazy. So you know how it works. People will head down, they'll put books or towels on lounges in great locations around the ship. They'll then basically disappear for hours. They might pop back at some point of the day and use it for a period of time, head off again for many hours. Cruise lines pretty much universally have a rule which says if your lounge is left unattended for 30 minutes, they'll take your stuff away so it frees it up. In my experience, not that many cruise lines actually enforce that, unfortunately. So people have learned actually if you do it, you're probably gonna get away with it. It's the ones where I've seen the most arguments and the most fights on board. Also linked to that, of course, is in the theater. If people are booking rows of seats or big chunks of seats for their friends or family, it's another thing which the cruise line strongly ask you not to do. And again, I've seen big falling out where people have been holding spaces. And again, the cruise lines will make announcements not reserving seats. People do it. And again, I've seen big stand-up rows over that as well. It's something guaranteed to drive people crazy and annoy them. Linked to that, another thing which does drive a lot of people crazy is, and that's when people talk through the shows or perhaps take pictures when they're not supposed to because it does get in the way of enjoying the show. Often because people haven't paid for the show specifically, it's just including their fare, a lot of cruisers do seem to behave very differently. They don't see it the same as perhaps if they'd paid. People will talk, they'll chat, they might take pictures and they're not supposed to. So you have all these screens around you and it is one thing that drives people crazy. And again, it's something that I've seen other cruisers get really, really uptight about. Perhaps one of my bugbears and things that I have seen people get really irate about is when people are late back for meeting points on excursions. So when you head on an excursion, perhaps you've got some free time and the guide says, you know, be back at 11 o'clock or two o'clock or whatever. And there's always people that you know at each of those stops will come back late, knowing full well that the guide and the bus will not leave without them. And people get really angry because they know that the pace of an excursion is always going to be driven by the people who are last. So particularly if you've got a number of different places to visit and people are back every single time late, it means that your time gets more and more squeezed. Definitely one thing that does annoy cruisers. Not surprisingly, perhaps kids can often be the source of a lot of annoyance and things that drive people crazy on a cruise, particularly those people who aren't traveling with kids. So kids running right around the swimming pool without sort of being reined in or perhaps charging up and down the corridors making a noise or playing in the lifts or where there are set times at a swimming pool for adults only or kids only and parents don't 
paying attention to that, let their kids go when it's adult only time or into adult only areas. So kids is often a source of conflict on cruise lines, particularly cruises and cruise lines which are not really family orientated. So clearly there's a lot of cruise lines, whether it's MSC Cruises, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, those sort of cruise lines that are very focused towards family. People going on those cruises do of course expect to see lots of kids, lots of families, and go with that mindset. On other cruise lines, which are perhaps less family or less kids orientated, I have seen a lot of kind of people going a little bit crazy, feeling that you know, kids behave better in my day or whatever. But kids is definitely something that can cause a lot of flashpoints and annoyance between cruises. Another thing that does drive people crazy, and I've seen it quite often on ships, is when people have room service, and instead of just phoning room service, which they ask you to do, they put the tray outside into the corridor. Now, particularly a lot of cruise ships, you know, the, the corridors are quite narrow, and if people do have some mobility issues, so they perhaps might be with a little walker or in a wheelchair, it means they're sort of having to shunt those aside to get up and down the corridors. But generally, just people think it's unnecessary because they know that you can actually just phone up your room service as you did, and they'll come pretty quickly and take it away from your cabin. So that's certainly one thing that I see discussed a lot and does seem to annoy cruisers quite a bit. The next two are really often interlinked. One of those are when people get really drunk and really rowdy and out of hand in any of the venues. And I've seen lots of tensions rise around that, particularly when people feel it's encroaching in their own space. Linked to that, of course, is the next point, which is just general noisiness. Particularly for people in cabins which perhaps have interconnecting doors or there's not great soundproofing where the people are particularly rowdy, noisy, partying in their cabin and it is quite intrusive on other people. That is one thing that you see a lot of complaints about. So of course the key thing is if you think that's going to impact you, make sure that you're choosing a cabin that first of all doesn't have an interconnecting door and secondly isn't above or below any of those venues where there's going to be lots of partying like the nightclub or perhaps the bars and the big late night venues. Surprisingly, one of the most interesting things that seems to wind people up enormously is comparing fares. You hear it happen all the time on cruises where people will start talking about the cruise and somehow they start comparing how much they paid. Whoever paid the most is annoyed. People that have got great deals are very proud of sharing that. If you did get an amazing deal and you want to wind up people, bring up how much did people pay. One of the things that perhaps is a thing that does annoy cruisers and increasingly is annoying cruisers and maybe a good thing that more people are getting annoyed is when they see their fellow passengers being rude or disrespectful or unnecessarily demanding of the crew on a ship. As we all know, the crew on the ship, they work very long contracts away from their family for a long time. They don't earn huge amounts of money and they work really hard with no days off. And so when other cruisers see cruisers being rude, disrespectful, over demanding, you know, creating a lot of mess, creating a lot of extra work for the crew, other cruisers get annoyed. And that's probably, as I said, is a good thing because actually treating your crew with respect and treating them well is a good thing. So I think personally, if people are getting annoyed, it's great because it's going to put more and more pressure on people to be more respectful. Next time you go on a cruise, take a look for some of these things and just see and look at how other cruisers are reacting to the things that cruisers do. It's very interesting to see that you'll probably find that these are the things that wind up people a lot. And encourage you next time you're on a cruise to take a look for each of these to see if you can spot them too. I think they are things that are really winding up modern cruisers a lot. Why not watch many more of my Tips of Travelers videos? They're packed full of advice and tips to help you make the most of your precious travel time and money on land, on sea, and on the rivers of the world. Thank you.